Did you ever think you might see the day when robots would scale your walls and weave you a vertical bed thing? Maria Yablanina, a graduate of the University of Stuttgart's Institute of Computational Design, created just that. Two robots scaled the wall in tandem, filled to the brim with carbon fiber that they used to weave a structure into the wall using protrude wall rods that you see coming out of the wall there. Don't worry, they aren't limited to walls. If you've always wanted a ceiling bed designed by robots, they can do that too, thanks to the internal fans. It's, it's basically, it sticks to the wall or the ceiling with these internal fans that just kind of keep it suctioned right to the surface. This reminds me of that spirograph screen yeah. art. Did you uh -huh. ever do that as oh, a kid? Yeah. That was awesome. Um, we have those. But this, I mean, this, this, they said that this could be the third industrial revolution. That this Carbon is we, fibers. Yeah, we could create bu entire buildings this way. Be amazing. I, I, I like the idea of, oh, we, we have some friends in town. We don't have an extra bed for them. Hold on. Let's get the robot to build a bed into the wall. Yeah. Or just like I've fiber. A, or like a hammock. Like that's what she meant. <laughs> yeah. I, I want a hammock. Um, I want a robot to build a hammock. I don't think that's too much. To no. Ask. And you, I don't know if I ever knew that I wanted that until I saw this video. Yeah. And it's true. That mm -hmm. would be a perfect application here. I do need a hammock. So this makes perfect sense, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, they, they are a little restricted. As you can see, there's the wires that are kind of held, you know, hanging off of them. So if they go there, every once in a while, you see people run in and reposition because they kind of get kind of tangled up a little bit or whatever. Right. Semi-autonomous. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a start. Mm -hmm. Maybe someday they'll they'll have a big enough Tesla battery pack built into it, and they'll be able to do this not mm -hmm. plugged in. Uh, all right, story number two. So you say that you have a Roomba that vacuums your floors, but oh wait, you still have to mop your floor. You're a chump. You, <laughs> you should get the Brava Jet instead. Also created by iRobot, the Brava Jet has a tank for water and you know of course soapy stuff and replaceable pads that it uses to scrub the floor it doesn't have sensors like the Roomba does instead it simply goes forward until it hits an obstacle then it goes back the opposite direction with an offset path uh, to mop up even more of that grungy stuff it works with the iRobot app so you can uh, you can designate boundaries, I suppose, to your room and activate spot cleaning features so you can kind of turn into spot cleaning mode. It's like, here's a really, you know, something. I don't know what that is, but get rid of it and it'll focus on that. Uh, but it sounds like the water tank needs refilling a bit too frequently for this to be a solid must have. So I don't know if you're getting this for Christmas or you're going to want this for Christmas, but it's an option. I do want it, except for why is it square? Like the Roomba is circular, but this one's square. That's a good question. Maybe that allows it to get into those corners better. I honestly, I don't know. That's a maybe maximum distribution of water. Like the Roomba, I think is more surface area and this is probably, you know, spread. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know exactly. I'm just guessing. Uh, yeah, I don't something know. Something along those lines. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I don't know if I want one. You'd um, leave, and then you come back, and your kitchen floor is, is mopped. Yeah, that. Although the person that wrote up the review said uh, it ran out of water after cleaning the bathroom. <laughs> so it sounds like it needs to be refilled a lot. And I think that's the big difference. Like with a Roomba, it's, just, it's, it's pulling in. This is actually, you know, putting out and then mopping up, you know, and so it has to store all that stuff that, it, that it's putting onto the floor. That could be a challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, finally... We use robots to print things on paper, so why not use a robot to print that thing on your arm or your face in the form of a tattoo? French designers Pierre M. and Johan da Silviera modified a MakerBot. Initially, they modified a MakerBot 3D printer, replacing the plastic extruder with a tattoo gun. That made it the world's first robot tattooist. But that led to what we see in the next video. If you go to the other link, or uh, yeah, go to, go to the second link on the, on the page here. You'll see a video of a broadening of the project that results in the world's first tattoo by an industrial robot. So if you skip about halfway, yeah, there's the industrial robot. So this is this thing is massive, and it's tattooing on this this dude's leg, and I'm frightened. Here's my question: yeah. uh, Why is the guy duct taped to the table? Why is his leg duct taped to the table? Was he doing this willingly or it, what? <laughs> yeah, right. We got you. We're gonna do this whether you like it or not. Well, because this robot, you know, it's it's early days, right? And so robots can don't necessarily they know the design that they're tattooing, but they don't necessarily know that you've moved a centimeter or an inch. So if I, I suppose they're just securing the arm down super tight so that there's absolutely no movement, so that that perfect circle is in fact a perfect circle when it's done and doesn't fall off path because you moved a slight centimeter. Okay. Um, maybe maybe they'll refine and move from duct tape to something a little bit less 
I, uh, jarring. Scary. That's, yes. Yeah. Scary. I mean, the idea of a robot tattooing your skin is scary in and of itself, I yeah. think. Would you do this? Uh, I like <laughs> tattoos on other people. Um, I find after watching these videos that I, I just realized that I don't enjoy watching other people be tattooed. Yeah, but not, not no with, a robot. Not in close ups either. No. Like, I, I'm cool with it far away, but this is like, check out what this thing's doing yeah. super close up, and it's kind of crazy to, to watch. Um, also, you know, robots must be designed to not push too hard into the skin yeah. because I don't know, that could really hurt you. Right. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Kind of frightening. I feel like tattoo artists are also very cool. And if I were ever to get a tattoo, like that would be part of the thing. I could hang out with a tattoo artist and talk to them, you know, and see all the cool <laughs> things in their life. But then the robot, eh, not so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, robots doing things. It like, it actually makes sense to me f to, to a certain degree because, you know, in, in replicating art, robots are incredibly precise uh, in order to do that. Like like I was saying, to do a perfect circle as a tattoo artist, a human tattoo artist, that is not the easiest thing in the world for any for any human to do a perfect mm -hmm. circle or, you know, a perfect kind of like sphere or whatever the case may be. Those aren't easy tasks to achieve, but for a robot, maybe a little bit easier. But there are other safety considerations that I imagine come into play. Well, the other thing is I was looking at the comments on the Verge article, and apparently uh, this was already patented in 2007 by a company called Restoration Robotics. So the, the patent for uh, robot tattoos was already mm. taken. So I don't know how much the automated delivery of therapeutic or cosmetic substance to cutaneous, subcutaneous, and intra muscular tissue regions. That's U.S. patent 792 That just rolls 8, off 8, the 8, tongue 8, right 8. there. <laughs> <laughs> that seems so overarching. That's like, we, we designed the idea that someday robots might give tattoos. That's right. basically what that patent says In based on the title. Uh, which, I mean, anyone could have assumed that. Uh, mm -hmm. So I wonder, you know, beyond that, if they if they have anything. Kind of sounds like a, a robot tattoo patent squatter. Oh, maybe. Kind of a whole new section yeah. of patent squatting. We should pat patent a robot that files patents. <laughs> yes. Let's there we that. go. All right. Okay. I'm happy this <laughs> I'm happy we got there because this is important. This yeah. could be the the new future.